In this video, we make the cabinet and finally get the clock up and on the wall. The cabinet was made by my friend Jason at Designer Oak, who provided it for me and my son to finish and assemble. Jason makes some really lovely bespoke oak items, including chopping boards. His link's in the description. Please check him out. And now, on to the video. So this is the position that we're in at the moment with the cabinet. Got an oak back running down the middle that's channelled and then we've got these end pieces on which are also channelled. Um, I've screwed and glued the top one on um, and I've just got the glass temporarily in place. I'm just going to take them out while we mount it. Um, the top oak pieces on the floor there with some screws in. That's going to get screwed on the top. Um, I'm yet to decide whether to actually bother gluing that. Uh, it does mean that if I ever smash the panel uh, that I could actually remove it and take them out. So kind of, especially considering no weight is going to be on the top. Uh, however, at this bottom end, there's uh, there's going to be plenty of weight on that in terms of the glass pieces. There's also a glass piece which is going to run along the front, which will be the sliding door. So there's no edging bars uh, to strengthen it. All the weight is on that bottom piece, but then under this, we're going to have a bracket. So in actual fact, the bracket will be painted white, same colour as the wall. Um, and then the bracket's just supporting that bottom piece. So that's what we're up to at the moment. Um, I've also mounted these four M4 studs in there, um, which has been, uh, which the, the clock is going to mount onto. So they're perfectly spaced. Um, I'm pretty solid. They're pretty much going through the full depth of the wood and into some uh, of the little threaded, uh, you know, the threaded studs. So that's what we're up to. So we're going to try and hang this now. Probably not going to take too many pictures of this just because uh, I've only got uh, a little bit of time to do this in. I want to have a go at it, get it on tonight. Uh, so we'll come back to it when it's mounted onto the uh, onto the wall. Well, I've finally made it and it's time to attempt to assemble the clock. These are all the parts laid out ready for me. One thing that I've done off camera, uh, unfortunately managed to get rid of the footage of, uh, was just making the maintaining works. Um, so what we've got here is this little uh, nib, which moves up and down under its own force, under, the, under gravity. Um, simply under there, uh, there is obviously this, this solid piece, and that's actually been um, riveted on there. And then I've polished this up um, so much that actually you can't see the, the rivet now, but there is there's basically a rivet right at the tip there. Uh, going through the brass and into that into that piece um, and then there's just a bottom section on there covering up the base but also covering up if I'm being honest the uh, pretty horrible looking hole this piece actually is quite angled so as you can imagine I've had to take quite a large area out of there and because I want the mass of the brass rather than just do it square I have tried to go a bit of an angle to try and remain as keep as much brass in there as possible uh, but yeah that's so we're up to so that's one piece that we didn't do uh, didn't show on camera unfortunately I have no footage for that and it also rotates uh, on this little pin so that pin gets you'll see that shortly when that gets screwed into the um screwed into the clock frame all right well like i say time to uh crack on making the video um the one part that i've also already mounted and put together is the top section um so you've seen this before on previous videos but that's already to just bolt on uh, rather than have that in separate pieces. Kind of did that off camera, I was polishing it and putting it together at the same time. I'm just going to swap that. One thing that I've realised is the moment to lift uh, and lower the uh, pendulum. And I use this bolt, but when it gets in the cabinet, I'm not actually going to be able to get a screwdriver in there because it's quite near the top. Probably able to get a stubby one in, but either way, I'm going to uh, swap that actually with, uh, with this uh, thumb screw. Okay, so everything's polished up except 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 these wheels and the reason being i've spent so long with this and it is so finicky that i do not want to get any cleaning compounds or anything else in these wheels these wheels have been running for two weeks if not longer than that in my workshop and i'm happy with them so i don't want to go messing around um polishing them up uh, and, and risking ruining them so i'm leaving them as they are everything else has been polished up as best i can uh, there's a few marks showing in the light, but uh, that is quite well polished. A few finger marks as well on there. All right, here we go. Let's get building. <laughs>
show pose. Um, another thing I've done off camera is just put the square on the end of the uh, main arbor, centre, centre wheel arbor. So that's going to uh, allow us to wind it. And wood, it's a little bit stiff. Um, but I don't want it too slack on there either. So we'll have to see how that goes. the key actually lifts up the maintaining work so it's got a functional part and again you'll see that a little bit later today um, but I just wanted to show the maintaining works um, effectively the maintaining works is being held out of the way uh, using the key so in a minute when I remove the key you'll see that the um, arm drops down the little tooth the little tooth at the end which you can just see will engage with this wheel um, and cause a force on that wheel to run the clock while the weight is being lifted um, and then again, when you lift this, when you lift this arm up, the tooth just uh, slides right out of the way. There's very little force on that. Just in terms of the clock case itself, like I say, it runs in the groove. The sliding front door runs in the groove. One thing I did do um, was printed a small 3D printed strip at the bottom. It's only about two millimeters thick. It just raises the door to a better position, but it also allows the door to slide much easily. Uh, much more easily back and forth so uh, that was something else that we did okay so um, we'll just go ahead now and we'll uh, try and wind the clock up Okay, so that's the uh, state of the clock so far. It's really quite difficult to get really nice photos. It looks absolutely stunning in the case. Really hard to get some photos though, because uh, you end up immediately getting some glare going on in the glass. But yeah, it's all uh, working nice. I I've done nothing with the timing yet. I need to put the face on. I need to get the hands sorted. Um, like I say, you do get a bit of reflection on the camera. Uh, certainly not nothing like in uh, real life. It looks looks lovely. All right, so next video, hopefully, face and hands, uh, and then we'll think about getting this timed up. All right, thanks again for watching. See you next time. <laughs>